How does something like this take direct current DC and change it into alternating current AC for devices to get plugged in? And similarly, like how does solar get inverted into DC at homes? Let's talk about it. So let's talk about the different processes for converting AC to DC or DC to AC. Um, in both processes, we're kind of just duping the devices that are hooked up to thinking that it's DC or thinking that it's AC. When in reality, we're creating a synthetic fake signal that looks very similar. So when we've got AC, um, typically through rectification, all we're doing is we're cutting out the polarity change where we're cutting out like a positive going to a negative and we're flipping that negative to go positive. So that's why we get a pulsing DC signal out when we have a rectifier. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, there's AC in and then there's just flat DC like a battery that comes out. That's not true. Uh, we always get a pulsing DC signal, but pulsing DC is not really useful for sensitive components and devices. They need a very smooth, clean DC signal because they are operating on DC. So they need something that looks a lot closer to DC than this. So we actually have to smooth out these ripples, so to speak. And we'll get into that in a second. The opposite thing is when you have DC, like a battery, you've got this flat, constant DC power, turning that into AC, what we end up doing is just pulsing a whole bunch of DC pulses that oscillate back and forth. And we trick a transformer into sensing and feeling like there's actually an alternating or expanding and collapsing magnetic field so that current can get induced through that transformer and actually start creating um, you know, current flow through the secondary of the transformer. So it's tricking it. And I think that's just really cool. So if we look, the first example is through rectification, right? So we've got, um, in this case, we're gonna be using a four diode rectifier or what we call a bridge rectifier, but this is the rectification. So we are taking AC and going to DC. So what happens is we've got a expanding and collapsing magnetic field in our primary. So that allows AC um, to induce current into our secondary, just like a normal transformer, nothing crazy. But what we hook up to it is this bridge rectifier. So what happens is we have diodes that are placed on these in very specific directions and a diode only lets current flow in one direction. So if you try to hook up AC current across this diode, it's only going to let it through in this direction. So when it oscillates back and forth, it's not going to allow anything to travel back. That's pretty cool. So you'll notice two of these are, are pointing outward, two of them are pointing inward. So what we have is if we say we start here, we need a complete circuit for a current flow, right? So if we start from here and we just say um, through one phase, one pulse of the circuit, we have a complete circuit all the way through. Can't go this way because we're getting blocked, right? We can only follow the arrows. So boom, out to whatever our load is, we have one path through this bridge rectifier. Well, since we have pushing and pulling that's happening at the same time, we have pulling that's coming through and we have to follow the arrows again. Boom, 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 we have a complete circuit. So that allows one pulse out of the output of this to happen. Now on the next pulse, all of this goes away and we go the opposite direction. So now we're coming this way and we need a path through. So same terminal, it's just now we're taking a different path through. Can't go that way, right? Because we're getting blocked by the diode. And then for the complete circuit to happen, we have to have uh, the second one we're pushing out. So we have to come back this way. And the only way we can go is through here to get our complete circuit. So it's just switching back and forth to make sure that we're getting a forward pulse that's one polarity. And that's how we get a pulsing DC out. It's essentially just cutting off all the negatives and flipping them up top. That's pretty cool. But like I said, pulsing DC, that's not good enough for all these small devices. If you try to hook your phone up to that signal, it's not gonna charge. It probably um, it could damage it or it could just not charge and recognize a smooth enough signal. So what we do is we add another component. Uh, in this case, it'd be a smoothing capacitor. This is kind of the easiest way to achieve some sort of smoothing or filtering of that pulsing DC that's coming out. So in this case, when we add a smoothing capacitor, we have, uh, with, with capacitors and inductors, we have a leading and lagging thing that happens. And it takes the, the current and the voltage and it actually pulls them apart by some angle, some amount, depending on the size of the inductors, capacitors, resistors, all that kind of stuff. 
If you want to learn more about like RLC circuits, inductive reactants, capacitive reactants, and all of these, these different weird complex things, check out electricianu.com. We've got a whole learning system where you get tons of videos. If you're a business or an individual, um, you can sign up and it's essentially just electrician school online. Um, so without getting crazy into all of that, essentially what we're able to do is we're able to shape this waveform a little bit more like this. So rather than pulsing going on, off, on, off, on, off, and being like really um, difficult on that device that's trying to utilize this DC, we're actually smoothing this out to kind of like a little bit of a ripple. And so for that device, it's like, oh, this actually kind of does seem like DC. It's not it's this on and off switching kind of thing anymore. So that's one way of achieving this, but it's still not good enough. If you have really sensitive electronics or you want something really well designed to have as smooth of a DC input as possible, there's another way of achieving this. And uh, we can use what's called an LC filter. Um, basically you're using an inductor and a capacitor. So before when we were talking about how we were utilizing just this portion of it because we had a capacitor in the circuit, well now we're adding an inductor to the circuit as well and we're taking into account the other side. So we would actually be taking into account all of this stuff too. And while this might be a little bit messy, you can see the result is just this, just riding on the top. So it allows us to have even less of a ripple rather than it looking, you know, jagged. We've got pretty close to a straight DC signal and that will trick most devices that need DC, that need clean, consistent DC into operating on the DC. So you can see, right, we're not actually creating DC. We're just really modifi uh, modifying, <laughs> we're just really modifying the AC and messing with it to dupe devices into thinking it's DC. I think that's cool. I don't know why, I just am a nerd, I guess. Now, if you're talking about inversion, inversion is kind of the opposite process of rectification, except it doesn't use the same technology at all. It's a, a lot trickier and crazier, but essentially we're still doing the same thing. We're trying to create a synthetic fake AC signal using DC pulses so we can trick an AC transformer into picking it up and producing AC. So this works um, a little bit different. So say we have a DC, uh, 12 volt DC battery. Um, we need to have a path all the way through to the, the primary low voltage side of a, uh, a transformer. So let's say we've got a 12 volt you know, battery over here. We've got a 12 volt primary and a 240 volt uh, secondary. And we want 240 out at the end of all of this craziness. And we want it as you know, close to an AC sine wave as possible. Well, it has to be, otherwise this whole side will not work. Transformer just won't pick it up if there's not an oscillating, changing uh, a, a magnetic field. So by doing this, we have something called a pulse oscillator. And uh, this does what the name says, it oscillates and oscillates in pulses very, very fast. And it also uses two MOSFETs, which you can think of them as just switches. Uh, when one of them is on, the other one is off. And when one, you know, one that's on, when it switches off, the other one turns on. So they take turns switching. And in doing this, we're able to, let's try to follow through. So say we're like feeding 12 volts in, we're always gonna be feeding like the center tap of the primary transformer. Um, and then if we take one path through this, we have to complete a circuit, right? So let's say like this one is activated, meaning this one is off because this one's on. We have a path through, boom, boom, boom. We have a full complete circuit. So now we're able to pulse something. And then when this one shuts off, we still need the same path, right? Center of our transformer on our uh, primary side. This time we're gonna take the other path. This one has shut off, this one turned on. We have a complete circuit all the way through. So now we're allowing another pulse. So it's not that like one of them is only the push and only the other one's only the pull, they take turns doing that. But the cool result of it is, is we're faking because we're allowing this, this transformer to have current going in one direction. And then immediately, you know, when one of these turns on, it's going in one direction. When it turns off, the other one turns on, current's going in the other direction. So it creates this oscillating of current that's being controlled electronically back and forth through that primary really, really fast. Because of that, we're creating an expanding and collapsing magnetic field around that, uh, that winding, which allows the secondary winding to pick it up. 
So now the secondary winding is like, oh, whoa, I got current flow and it's expanding and collapsing like this must be AC. And so now AC current is able to flow. And so now we have a completely isolated, whoops. <laughs> we have a completely isolated uh, system here where we've got a clean AC sine wave out that the secondary doesn't realize is just clever DC to disguise, but it's making it work. I just think that's cool. And honestly, this is how most of the world is run. Most of the devices that you use, all the audio equipment, cameras, I mean like everything, whether you got solar or a battery backup system, UPSs, like all of it works on this process of being able to convert AC to DC or DC to AC. That's pretty dope. So let's talk about a use case where we have both of these processes going at the same time. So this is a DC power supply. It's for job sites. If you're out in the middle you know, of boonies working somewhere, you don't wanna haul this huge generator and fuel and all that craziness. You can just bring one of these. It's super lightweight, throw in the back of your truck. But the cool thing about it is it's got AC out, but it's a DC battery. So we're using the inversion process to go from DC to AC, just like we would do on a house with solar panels, right? We bring DC from the solar panels, we get AC through to the rest of the house. Um, but when you plug this in to charge it, if you're not using a solar panel to charge it, which would be DC to DC charging, the little uh, plug in the back will plug into a wall outlet, which is taking AC in and charging a DC battery. So in that case, we're using rectification. So this is a really great device, it has all of it. This thing actually has wireless charging too. And I thought about doing a whole video, but then I was like, that's another 15 minute uh, diatribe on how wireless, how induction works and everything. But it's really cool. You can stick your phone on the top of this thing, charge your phone all day long. You can stick you know, batteries on this, plug all of your drill batteries all day long. If you've got like, uh, you know, headphones or anything that you need to charge with USB, USB-C, it's got this little cigarette lighter thing. And the coolest thing on the back, it's got this light. So like for utility, this is a really great thing for an electrician to just have on their truck. Um, and it's all electric, you're an electrician. Come on now, it just makes sense. So anyways, just wanted to teach you guys a little bit about the AC to DC, DC to AC thing. And um, if you're interested in one of these things, they're really awesome. There's a link in the description below. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.